Hello and welcome along and welcome to the first episode in a new series here on Oak Hill. Uh, welcome to Oak Hill to give it its full name. Uh, we are down at the farm that we are about to buy. So this is the farm right in the center of the map uh, where we're going to get started. We are right here. So dead center pretty much of everything uh this is uh, an arable farm setup so we're going to be doing a very arable farm uh playthrough on here uh it is start from scratch and we have five hundred thousand to start with which is not going to be enough so first thing i'm going to do to get ourselves set up today we're going to borrow half a million pound take ourselves up to a million pound in total which should be enough to get us started and set up and running on here now this is going to be the biggest let's play i think i've ever done i'm sorry biggest a uh, start from scratch uh let's play i've ever done uh we are gonna have a lot of fields on here so having a look around here for this farm here if we buy this uh, here we get started with fields 31 32 33 61 and 62 uh potential is not bad although we look like we've got a fair amount of silty clay on some of these fields but we're gonna buy this uh, and that gives us a good starting point now what i also want to do is we've got all of this area around the farm as well and most of this is connected to our farmyard so i am also going to buy these three sets of land as well uh 63 and 66 for a hundred and nine thousand like so um 116 73 and 74 for one hundred and fifty thousand like that and 71 117 and 76 for another 113,000 that takes our total cost up to uh i think that's about 552,000 just under 552,000 but it does give us a huge amount of fields so we've got 13 fields here 10 of them are arable uh, and three of them are grass we're going to keep these three grass fields we're going to do some grass work on here as well we obviously have no animals of our own to uh, work with these grass fields but we will be able to sell the bales and make money and the good thing about it is we'll be able to make money throughout the year off the grass stuff but we need to get started today and what we need to do next is get these fields scanned as you can see we have no idea as we've just bought these what we have on the precision farming so time to get our first tractor and for our first tractor we are going to get this beauty this is the massey ferguson 135 absolutely perfect little yard tractor for us uh this will do all of our little transport jobs this will do all of our uh this will move our headers and stuff around stuff around and also is absolutely great for us to start our precision farming journey by putting the scout on the back of it and scanning some fields so rim color i am going to go for the red design color I'm going to go for the black um, because uh, I like that sort of setup. And that's going to be a little bit of a theme, to be honest, on what we're doing with our tractors on here. Um, optionals, we have a front guard, a front weight frame or weights. I actually want to put the front loader attacher on here, which means that I think we can't actually... If we put the front guard on we can't yeah so basically we can't put anything else on if we put the front loader attacher on so we'll leave that as it is uh i want to put the uh slightly more modern flat top fenders on that i like how this tractor looks a bit more like that uh gps obviously not as this tractor is way too old for that front facing headlights uh standard wheel setup we don't need any special wheel setup on this uh we'll go with the standard 135 it doesn't actually make any difference to our power to have the multi power version so uh yeah we're gonna go with the standard setup and as i said we are buying uh this with a front loader attacher on it so there we go and yes twelve thousand six hundred for that and then the second item we're gonna get from the shop is this this is the asaria scout so this is what we need in order to get the position farming uh scanning going we do have the add-on so we could pay to have uh our field scanned to be perfectly honest though 
I like doing this manually. Um, this is 17,000 to buy, but in, in interest of keeping our costs down, and we're actually going to do this a lot with our equipment, uh, we're going to rent this. It's 867 to rent it. Uh, it's 170 per day, so let's lease this piece of equipment. We're going to get a little bit wet in this on this tractor, but that's not too bad. I'm not going to get the front loader attacher yet. We'll do that when we start transporting some of our stuff down. Uh, but we need to get back down to our farm with this and work out which fields we're going to scan first so that we can get to work on those and uh, and get some early crops in. So when we get down to the farm, we'll have a look at our crop rotation and we will see where is the best place for us to start getting to work on our farm. And now that we're back at our farm in our little 135, we can work out exact well we can have a look at what we've got in the way of our uh what we've got in the way of our crop rotation and how we can apply it so let's see in here under our seasons menu this is the crop rotation we're going with on here so we're going to do rye potatoes soybeans canola corn and sunflowers uh, you can see they've got a pretty good uh, yield potential from all of them here everything is over 100 percent except for the potatoes which in all honesty unless you're putting in a fallow field before you do the potatoes uh, you're, you're rarely going to get over 100 percent uh, also, most of these are harvestable by a combine harvester. Everything but the potatoes uh, can be harvested by the, uh, using a combine. And, uh, and the potatoes, we're going to use stuff from the Grimmer DLC to do. So this should work for us quite nicely. Uh, now, what we want to look at is fields. See what fields we've got and what we can plant. At the moment of our crops, we can plant the rye... Uh, we can plant the potatoes. Uh, we can't plant the sunflowers. We can plant the canola. Do we have canola in our thing? We do have canola. Uh, and we might be able to plant the corn. No, we can't plant the corn yet either. So, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to go with this and see how we're going. You can see here we are doing nine-day seasons with this many fields. Nine-day seasons just really, really make sense. Uh, and we can skip a day if we need to at some point, which I think is what will happen probably over the winter. So, let's get started on this. I think we want to find a field that we can plant the rye in first. So, let's have a look at what we've got and what we currently have planted on our fields. Uh, we've got two fields here of sugarcane, which is a grass. So the rye would go well after that. Uh, the rye would also go well, looking at where it is in our rotation, after sunflowers. So let's have a look at this in this menu here. So do we have sunflowers anywhere on our farm? We don't on any of the fields we own. So we're, we're best off putting the rye in either 73 or 61. What is the state of these fields though? Do they need plowing? Uh, 73 doesn't, 61 does. So I would suggest uh, we get started by first scanning field 73. Uh, once we've got that scanned, what we can do is go and get ourselves a planter and get our first crop in there. Presuming, of course, that we don't need to get any lime on it. So let's head down to that field uh, and get that scanned and see what comes out at the other side. So here we are at the bottom end of field 73. Uh, you can see it's not actually accessible from... Oh, no, it is accessible from the main farm across... Uh, so there's sort of a roadway around the outer edge of field 74 that we can access it by. Uh, there's lots of roadways all over the place on this map. And it's a, it's a great map for that kind of... Uh, of slight confusion in exactly how we get everywhere we want as Lancy boys maps always are so we're going to go around we're going to sample this field and uh, and once we've got this sampled uh, we'll be able to uh, then 
come back here uh, with a cedar, get this field started to be seeded. Because that is going to be the, the sort of the great enemy we have on here. Although we're running nine day seasons, that means that in order to get everything planted by the end of spring, we have to plant at least one field a day. And I'm really, really hoping that, uh, that this is not going to require uh, any lime on here. Uh, if we're lucky, uh, it shouldn't do, and we'll be okay. Otherwise, uh, we'll have to go and get this field limed first. Um, but uh, as I said, really hoping that's not going to be the case. One more sample should do it. Right here. And that is the whole of this field done. As soon as... Yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, there's a tiny patch in the middle of the field. Uh, I am a little bit of a completionist when it comes to this. So we're going to... We are going to... Ah, uh, no. Actually, it's not worth doing it. If we have a look at the precision farming screen, uh, we can see... Yeah, we're, we're kind of sitting over the patch, so that's fine. Uh, let's see how many samples we've taken. So we have done nine samples to get the whole of field 73 done. Let's send off our samples for analysis and see what they come back as. £900 for the soil samples. The analysis is done and... We are mostly sandy loam on this field here. Now, this is one disadvantage to having uh, multiple fields purchased in one area. Is if we look at this, while it said mostly sandy loam, uh, we're probably looking at most of the loam being here with most of the sandy loam concentrated in field 73 here. So that means that we are in a position where uh, this is not going to be the greatest of yields of this field. It's not too bad but it's not going to be brilliant so i'm going to return this tractor back up to our farm uh, and we will head back to the shop and grab our second tractor for today my second tractor is going to be this one this is the massey ferguson 6600 series uh, we'll give it a bit of customizing first because I want I want to change the look of it a little bit. Um, for the rim color, I'm going to go with the black wheels. Uh, design color, I also want to uh, to add some black accents. I think that just looks absolutely awesome. Uh, wheel brand, we will go for Michelin. I like to put Michelins on all of my stuff. Uh, we want a GPS receiver and GPS uh, system on this. Uh, I want to pump the horsepower up to 160 uh that will make this much more of an all-rounder for us here uh and a 6614 doesn't quite make it uh massively expensive uh and then finally we are looking at putting a front loader attacher on here which takes us up to a hundred and uh, uh 138 um, yeah, I think we'll go with that. That is a good, nice, all mid-range, all-rounder tractor. Uh, maybe on the lower end of that, but you'll see why we've gone for this overall in the end. Uh, yeah, I think this works great for us, so we're going to buy that. Like so. To go with it and get our seeding started, we're going to use this. This this is the Pottinger Lion 303 plus Aerosem 3002. Uh, so it's a cultivator and or a power harrow and cedar all in one. Uh, you can separate the two out if you want, but uh, we're going to be using them as a single item. 165 horsepower is five horsepower more than our tractor, but should be fine. Um, and we are going to lease this. So as I said early on, we're looking to keep the costs down as much as possible in the early stages and on this first year. So things like this, uh, we're not going to use it for enough hours to cost us 40000 So we might as well uh, lease it uh, for now, especially as it has no customizations. So let's lease that. And that is done. We also need a weight to go with it. So we are going to go with this. This is the Agco uh, 1100. Uh, we're going to get it an Onyx as that will go nicely with our tractor. Um, and that will work well. And it's going to be something we use a lot. So uh, And it's also only 1100. So we will buy that as well. 
And then finally, we need a pallet full of rye seed. Hopefully, this is going to do us most of the thing. It actually is more on here. There's 2,100 litres on here. So this will be more than we need on our uh, on our field. So we will... Uh, well, I hope this will be more than we'll fit in our cedar, sorry. So we will have to come back up here with 135 and collect the rest. But for now, uh, let's buy this and we can get everything started and loaded up. And there we go. So there we are. We've got our tractor, our cedar, our front weight and our seeds. Let's jump into the tractor. Get this started up. And back it off. There's no the interesting thing about this map is there's no obvious uh, flags or anything saying that this is particularly a Massey Ferguson shop or a John Deere shop or a New Holland or anything, which I I do quite like. It does make me feel a little bit freer and uh, and, and happier about uh, using uh, one particular brand. And this brand, of course, Massey Ferguson, which is our main brand we're using on here. Uh, we've chosen this because you guys chose it. You voted for it on the youtube community page and as a result we are able to uh you you've been able to choose what we're gonna do so i'm gonna open this up and drop it down and we'll fill this up and the nice thing about this realistic seed mod is that it is uh, we can only have rye in here at the moment and we'll have to come back here or we'll have to transport some more seeds back to plant something else back down to field 73 and we want to get this set up now with course play here so we'll turn off these and bring that up uh, we are looking to do fertilizing and seeding with it course generation uh, we want field 73. Uh, we want automatic direction. Uh, three meter cedar is good. Headlands, we want it to do three. We want to go clockwise, up downs first, turn in the corners, and generate me a course. Now we want to have a look at this. Now, this is uh, pretty nice in the way it's shaped here. But if we head back out here, what I really want to check is, does this match the slope of the hillside as well? And it does, actually. Uh, it's very much going uphill. Uh, it's going across the hillside, which is absolutely perfect. So we know we can start in this corner with this as well. So let's get this round here. And open this up. The nice thing about this farm is I've now worked out where i need to go and where i need to drive to avoid going on the main roads for most of my fields uh, which is absolutely brilliant makes things so so much easier uh we're gonna go first waypoint uh we will drive course and away we go in goes the rye and we can head back and work out what our next field that we need to work on is so back up at our matty 135 and yeah the next field we probably need to take a look at working is field 61 i think we know we got sugarcane in there which we want to, or was previously sugarcane which we want to plant with rice so we can continue with this uh cedar and uh and tractor doing this um, but it needs plowing at the moment. So we do need to get our third tractor to get this plowed. But before we do that, we need to head over and get it scanned. So back in our 135, back out into the rain with this. And we're going to get that field scan next. And then hopefully, so long again, as long as that doesn't need liming, uh, we'll be in a position where we can get this ploughed and ready for planting rye. And then we might actually be ahead of ourselves, which would be a really, really good position to be in. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's get this scanned and, uh, and see where we are at the end of it. And the last sample means that the whole field should be covered. And there we go. Right, so... How many have we got here? I actually managed to do a double sample by mistake. 
So it should have only taken eight to do that field. Uh, has taken nine instead. Let's send them off and see what the results of that is. And the results are back from the lab. And wow, this is a really nice field. So while it's not yet ploughed, we are pretty much 100% loam on here. So this is going to cause a massive increase in the yield on this field. Uh, how are we doing as far as pH levels go? Uh, it's a 6, 6.25, so it's not bad at all. Um, could possibly, both of these fields could possibly be done with a little bit more, but... At the moment, I'm not too worried about that. It's not really low, and I think next year uh, that will call for some liming just to bump our yield up a little bit on these. Uh, so I think we'll get straight on with ploughing this field. So we'll go and put this a little 135 back in our shed, and we'll go and grab our third tractor for this farm, uh, which is going to be used sort of the higher end stuff uh, for things like ploughing, and um and actually seeding when our 6600 is in use so as a result we need something with a little bit more horsepower and that is going to be our 7600 massey ferguson so this has a 155 horsepower as standard we're going to bump that up a little bit but as always we want to uh sort our colors out first so i think the main color is that right? No, that's not the one I want to do. Uh, we are going to go for the black accents again with the black wheels. I do love a Massey Ferguson looking like this. Configuration, we've got standard, a front weight. But what we really want is a front uh, three-point. Um, actually, I'm looking at this. I'm going to go and we'll do a 720 kilogram weight maybe. Uh, no, actually, I am going to go with the front hull drive because the weight I want to put on this is a lot more weight than that. Uh, wheel brand, Michelin, uh, GPS receiver, yes. Uh, Gover positioning system, yes. And this is where we bump the engine up. We're going to bump it up to a Dyna 6, uh, which is a 7615. Um, it's, uh, it's 175 horsepower, which should be enough for what we need. And going up to the next level adds another 5,000 onto it and takes us to a 17, uh, 7616. That is 185 horsepower, slightly more than what we're going to need on the farm. So uh, yeah, a 7616, uh, we don't want a front loader attacher on it. And that pretty much sorts us nicely for this setup. So we're going to buy this tractor. There we go. And to go with it, as I said, we want to get a front weight. So we're going to get this. Uh, it's an Agco 1500 uh, weight. We're going to get that in the Onyx as well. And buy that to go with our tractor. And there we go. And finally, then, I want to plow. And that is going to be this beast. This is a uh, Potinger 30, Servo 35.6. So 6 thorough plow uh it requires 170 horsepower uh we're gonna go with the lower link balls for uh, easy connection and wheel setup uh we're just gonna leave it with the standard uh wheel setup on here as we aren't interested in actually changing any of these options and as as i said we're trying to keep the price down uh we're gonna go with the initial leasing cost at uh at this 1127 with the 221 pounds per day and we're gonna lease this as well so that uh yeah so that all of our equipment leasing that is gonna put us fairly well now it has got stuck on the uh on those but we should be all right picking that up so let's jump into this grab our weight on the front and then we can hook our uh equipment on the back so what i'm going for really as much as i can here you might have noticed is to try and keep a consistency between uh not only our tractor brand but our equipment brand as well so where i can i'm gonna go with uh the pod, uh, podinger stuff and uh and try and do it that way so let's that's turning it i don't want to do that i want to 
get it into position for road. I don't think we've connected up. There we go. Fold it away. Get our beacons on. And head back down to our farm. And we're going to go and get that field uh, plowed so that it's ready when our cultivate or when our uh, cedar is finished uh, we'll be able to get field uh, our next field planted as well and be nicely ahead of ourselves so back down at our farm and we're going to get course play doing this as well so open up here course generation field 61 uh starting direction automatic uh bypass islands we want three headlands as before clockwise up downs first turn in the corners and, uh, and we're gonna reduce this to three meters it says it's a 3.2 meter plow it registers in the shop as three i'm gonna go with the slightly smaller size and if we have a look at that we've got this now this is where this field presents a bit of a problem if we come back out here and have a look at our field uh, up here you can see that the way it's done it is kind of it does go with the slope i suppose it does go with the slope i was gonna i was about to say oh it's it's all uphill uh, it's it is and it isn't i think what we want to do is we look at this course generation i i want to it's going to be more of a diagonal to get this to go up the slope. So let's head back into the course generation. Uh, come back in here. And I think we want to try and get our starting direction to go across the slope like this. It'll make it a bit difficult overall, I think. But it's uh, I think it'll work. I think it's going to work for us better. So if we go longest edge... I think that is going to generate it along that edge, uh, which it has, which is very, very much uphill. So we'll go manual and we're going to go 300 and generate that and see what that looks like. So that is more along the lines of where we want to be. So if we reduce that to 290, that's going the wrong way. So we're going to go 310 that's much better but it does have a little bit of a, an odd bit down the bottom here but should still work out for us i can't see any really bad uh go overs but yeah that that should work pretty well and we almost start and finish in the same place so i really really quite like that let's unfold our plow and set it up so that it is uh, going where we want it to first waypoint and drive course and away it goes absolutely perfect uh, that should get our field nicely plowed and ready for seeding later on meanwhile we've got a job that still needs doing i'm gonna get some more of our field scanned uh, if we can scan the whole farm fairly quickly, we'll be able to tell where we are with everything. And uh, and hopefully that's going to put us in the best position going forward to get all this done. I think this field here, we may be able to scan the entire end of this field in one go. So I'm going to start here with this. Uh, and then we'll see how many more fields we get done before our other pieces of equipment have finished the jobs that they're currently doing um and uh and we'll see where we are at the end of the day just gone 6 p.m in game and uh it's getting dark and we are well we've got most of our farm done let's uh oh, let's go put this in a full shed that's that'd be much better for this we've got lots of uh of great sheds around here there's, there's this one here, which we could put our equipment in quite nicely. Uh, there is uh, also this workshop over here, which I'm tempted to put stuff in. Uh, but no, we'll, we'll put the little Massey in this shed over here. Do we have any lights? That's the big question. 
Yes, we do. And they're nice. One of the uh, one thing I actually do like that's taken me a little while to get used to is the fact that all the lights and everything are marked out just inside of the sheds. So over here, turn that on, and we've got a whole load of light for our 135. So we can turn the lights off on that. Uh, let's just jump back in this send off our soil samples so we've taken 40 soil samples this is going to cost us four thousand pounds to get it done uh, but it's going to be worth it so uh, let's send these off and we'll see what they come back with and there we go four thousand pounds and look at that so that is a really interesting layout so we know that field 116 and 117 that we've got here they are almost completely loam unfortunately they are also both almost completely grass yeah 16 and 17 are both big grass fields but on here they are actually really really good um so yeah this is gonna be a little bit of a stretch uh so i think we're gonna have to make these arable fields in order to to do better off them uh the sandy loam isn't quite so bad so these can still be uh these i think having uh these ones as arable fields is fine uh we do have a tiny fraction here that looks like silty clay if we've got some silty clay over here that's probably going to be a better use of uh of fields for uh use with uh grass and doing stuff like that so we'll next time we'll get these ones here these five fields here scanned uh we'll see where we go with those looks like we might have some more loam coming out in field 66 which would be great uh so uh yeah I think we're going to have a play around and see where we are. Where are we with our two other tractors, though? So looking on here, uh, field 73, that is the one that is currently being planted. Uh, as you can see, it is being planted by Rye. He's not far off, so that will finish off today. Field 61, though, that tractor we will continue on next time and keep that going, uh, and we'll see maybe what we can get in elsewhere though for now we're gonna leave this here so i'm gonna leave you with the massey 135 which means that all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed this video please give it a like drop us a comment and give it a share and for all the latest videos from virtual farmer please subscribe to the channel ring that bell and i will see you next time goodbye